it's, uh, <clears throat> it's been a really tough day. Uh, uh, I, I think we've all known and this was coming, but it doesn't make it any easier. Um, I think I think back in Pearl Washington when uh, when I first saw him play, uh, I thought he was uh, the most exciting player I've ever seen play the game of basketball. I still think that today. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, he. We've been fortunate. We've had a lot of great players, but uh, I think there's there's really only one. <coughs> there's just only one guy like him. And, uh, <coughs> he was uh, a really humble guy. And uh, he not only um, helped make our program, he helped make the, the Big East, and he helped college basketball. He was a guy that everybody wanted to see play. Um, <clears throat> people in California who didn't know me when I went out there. The next year when Pearl was a freshman, they all knew who, that I was Pearl Washington's coach. Uh -huh. <clears throat> he had an unbelievable effect on our program, and, uh, and uh, yet he was uh, an unbelievably <clears throat> humble guy, and uh, it's tough to, to lose him uh, so soon. <clears throat> Okay, I'll take a couple questions. What was the, the last time you were with Pearl? Uh, what was that uh, like for you? Well, I know he's been bad. I actually, the last I talked to him on the phone just after we were going to go to the, we made the Final Four. He, he was, could, could barely, could respond just a little bit, but he was excited that we were going to go, that the year we finished, how the year finished, it was, he was excited about it. Uh, he was excited that our players were wearing the shirts, his shirts, it meant a lot to him. I thought it was a great thing for our players um, to do. I think they just wanted to do it. I don't remember anybody, I didn't tell them, I don't know if anybody told them to wear them, they just wanted to wear them. And I think that, I think that meant a lot. <clears throat> I think when you uh, see what uh, guys like Chris Mullen and Patrick say about it, I think it says a lot about it. <laughs> what, what, did he, what did he mean to you personally? You talked about the program, the Big East. Personally, personally he's just a great kid. I mean, our, our the players that play here are like family, but um, you know it's like any family. You're, you get closer to some guys, some family than others. So just the way it works. Um, he was just, you know, he just always uh, was never about Pearl. It was never about <clears throat> what he did or didn't do. It's, uh, he just uh, a unique player, but really. Uh, a unique, uh, a unique person, and uh, I just think that uh, <clears throat> we were lucky to have him. I was just very lucky to have him coach him. You mentioned how great of a person he is. How much does that did that enhance the legacy of this amazing player? And well, uh, you know, to me, it's what you are as a, you know, that's what's important. Um, and we've had a lot of great people, a lot of great players, great people. Uh, and Pearl is, uh, you know, just, uh, he, he's, he's just unique, really. There are, it's a word I don't use, don't like to use. Uh, yeah, he's a unique player. He brought something to people. People were, wanted to watch him. You know, the dome was relatively new. And 
I don't know the numbers, but when Pearl came, the numbers changed, and people wanted to come to see him play. I mean, they wanted to come to see Syracuse, but they wanted to come to see Pearl Washington. My two sons and I stay up at night till 10.30 at night, many nights, to watch Steph Curry play because he's just not a player. He's different. He's, he's exciting. People tell me all the time that's what they, they stayed up to watch Pearl Washington, or they made a point to watch Pearl Washington play. They had great players, Tim Hardaway, for one, come up to me and says, you know, I learned my move crossover watching Pearl. That's where I got it. Many, many players <clears throat> have told me that. Of course, a lot of the players to Derek Coleman come on and said, Pearl's the reason they came to Syracuse. Can you talk about how he... There's no doubt. I mean, that he, <coughs> his excitement, what he did on the court, that's what got people excited about Syracuse basketball. And um, <coughs> from that, everything flows. Derek Coleman and Carmelo Anthony at all flows down that same path and uh, you know he he did a lot for this program on and off the court in terms of what it was going to be and it was all the, the start when Pearl came here in the Big East and the Carrier Dome everything came together and uh, he's the only guy that could just Autumn, just overnight, filled a, a place like that. You know, people wanted to be there. And uh, he's the only player that I've ever kind of watched during a game instead of watching the, what I'm supposed to be watching. Coach, what kind of uh, coaching did it take to make Pearl a better player? You know, Pearl knew, you just had to give Pearl the framework and he understood what he needed to do within that framework and he was unselfish. He, uh, you just when you get a player like that. You just have to get him in the framework and don't try to do too much with him. Let him play. Let him have the freedom that he needs to to be effective. And uh, you know, and he did that. He uh, he was uh, a difficult guy. The Big East was at its peak then, and he was the toughest guy in the league to guard. You know, I, I don't think there's any question about that. Can you take us through the first time you watched him play and through the recruitment of Pearl and getting him to come here? Well, the first time I saw him was in the wheelchair classic in Brooklyn. I got there at 7 o'clock for a 9 o'clock game. He was going to play about 9 o'clock, I think. Uh, there were people there at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It was, uh, you know, the young, he was young. He was a junior, sophomore going into his junior year, and the seniors play, you know, they have one sophomore or two sophomores play for each borough. People were standing there for hours. When he came out, the, the place was electric. It was electric. He, he just everybody, everybody standing. Nobody sitting in the building. And uh, the first time I saw him, I think he went had 46. He just against seniors. He just destroyed everybody. He was just that kind of player. And uh, I haven't seen anything like that before or since. <laughs> How did it make you feel that maybe some of the younger guys on this year's team really took to those T-shirts and took to kind of honoring him, even though they made only one? I thought it was great for the players. Like I said, they, I just saw them wear. I didn't even know how they got them or what they were thinking or if somebody. I don't think I never told them to wear them. They just wore them and they kept wearing them. And uh, uh, I think people know the the legend. <clears throat> There aren't really many legends. I'm thinking of back when you buy this humility about you to talk about that and expect when you're a city point guard to be yeah, he was just completely different off the court. I don't think people understood that for a while. You know, he never was about that. You know, it was never about that. He was as humble as anybody I've ever known. Anybody. Well, he's one of a kind. We're fortunate that we had him here. <laughs>